At this point, you've learned how to make good use of the concept of momentum. Although Newton's laws were amazing tools for understanding how forces influence the interactions around us, momentum proved to be a pretty darn easy tool for analyzing collisions and explosions. So what about the case where you're dealing with a collision or explosion and a bit of force information is either needed or available? Certainly, we could go back to Newton's laws. In the explosion or collision, we already know that Newton's third law tells us that the forces are equal and opposite, and the acceleration of the masses is proportional both to the forces and the masses involved, Newton's second. And so this dynamics analysis, along with some kinematics equations, again, could lead us to a fair bit of information, but also a fair bit of work. Given that, as a possibility, we're kind of fond of the way that momentum allows us to more quickly analyze these collisions and explosions and jump right to the velocities, the question comes up, can we kind of cheat and combine the two of them? The ease of momentum in solving the stuff and the ability to bring forces into it all? Well, there is, and we call it impulse. So let's look at impulse. Impulse equals the change in momentum, but it also equals F delta T, the force times the time over which that force acted. Now remember that delta represents the change in something. The word impulse itself is kind of irrelevant. It's all about the change in momentum being equal to the force times the time here. Impulse is just a term we use to help discuss this relationship. Now, showing how the impulse must be true is pretty easy in that if we divide both sides of this equation by the delta t, we end up with this. Now, what is the change in velocity over the change in time? So think back to your kinematics. What is the rate of change in velocity? It's acceleration, right? So basically what we're saying here is that F equals MA. And this should look familiar and very valid. So let's consider an example here. During a baseball game, batter facing a ball and the ball is coming at them at 30 meters per second. The batter is able to impart a 35,000 Newton force on that ball. What is the new velocity of the baseball? This looks like a classic momentum problem. Two masses experiencing a collision, and we want to know what the velocity of one of the masses is following that collision. So by default, we think, well, momentum before equals momentum after, and we start looking at it that way. The momentum of the bat and the momentum of the ball and it's a partially elastic collision, so they separate. And so on the right-hand side, we would have the velocities and momentums as well. So at this point, we recognize that we don't have all the required information to do this. Instead, we're given a force and a time relating to the bat. So is this a dynamics problem then? Well, it could be. But let's consider the easiest way to deal with this might be our new idea around impulse. So again, impulse equals the change in momentum and it also equals the force delta T. So if we consider the ball on the left hand side, the change in momentum of the ball, so the mass of the ball times delta V ball, as we know that the mass of the ball doesn't change, it's only its velocity, so we say delta V here. And on the right we have the force imparted by the bat the force delta T, the time that the bat takes to impart that force. Now on the left hand side here we can work with it and we can replace the delta V with V ball prime for the velocity of the ball after the hit and the V ball for before they hit the velocity of the ball going in opposite directions. At this point, we can just rearrange the equation to solve for the V-ball prime, looking for the velocity of the ball following the collision, and plug in our numbers. 
Of course, again, we have to be careful with our signs as the velocity of the ball is in two opposite directions here. And that's it. Not too bad, eh? As a related follow-up example, also relating to the new concept of impulse, let's consider the situation where the baseball pitcher throws that ball, but it ends up being a strike. The catcher, in this case, has to change that ball's momentum. In their case, they're having to bring that ball from the 30 meters per second down to 0 meters per second in a fairly short period of time. Again, we could look at it through the eyes of impulse. The change in momentum equals F delta T. In this case, the change in momentum is the required part. That is, the ball's mass doesn't change, and the catch must get the ball from 30 meters per second down to 0 meters per second. So let's look at the other side and consider options. If the catcher tries to stop the ball as fast as possible, shrinking T down, perhaps keeping their arm as stiff as possible and providing no give, then we have the smaller T. And what does that do? It means that if the change in momentum is the same and the T is smaller, then the force is going to be a whole lot bigger. And this can be effective, but it can also be effective in making the catcher's hand very sore. Bigger forces, meaning bigger bruises. So how does the catcher stop the ball and better minimize the forces? Well, providing some give in the hands and the arms allows the ball to take a little more time coming to the stop. Same ideas follow through, just looking at it the other way. Increase the time with a little extra movement as you bring the ball to a stop, the given change in momentum. Also, the more padding in the glove also adds a little more time to that force. And so it can bring down the amount of force that's required to cause that change in momentum. This same application of influencing forces through little adjustments with the impact time is a good thing to consider and recognize in day-to-day -day interactions, using airbags in your car or various other collisions. In this tutorial, we considered the concept of impulse, basically finding a way of combining forces with our understanding of momentum to allow for a greater ability to analyze a variety of collisions and explosions.